In my last video, I talked about how lowering a car impacts the suspension roll centers and how that might change a car's handling. I noted that lowering the car also lowered the roll centers and thereby would increase the roll moment and the amount of body roll in a corner. Some of you asked why this is true since lowering the car should decrease the amount of roll since the car is lower altogether. I can see why this might be confusing, so I'd like to clear that up and explain why both can be true. Hello, I'm Hubert Mace, and this is Suspensions Explained. When a car enters a corner, the cornering forces acting at the left and the right tire contact patches, together with the inertial forces acting at the vehicle center of gravity, cause a moment to be applied to the car since they are not in line with each other. This moment is called the weight transfer and it causes the vertical force on the outside tires to increase and the force on the inside tires to decrease. The amount of weight transfer is equal to the cornering force multiplied by the height of the center of gravity above ground and then divided by the track width. As the weight transfer loads up the outside tires, there are two paths it can follow. It can travel along the suspension links or it can travel through the spring. And one of the effects of roll center height is to control how much of the weight transfer goes through the suspension and how much goes through the spring. To better understand this, imagine if we had a roll center that was at the same height as the center of gravity. Remember, the roll centers define the axis the body rolls around in a corner, like the hinges on a door. So if the inertial forces of the car are pushing directly on the roll axis, there shouldn't be any roll at all, right? Imagine trying to close a door by pushing right on the hinges. You can't do it. This is the same thing. However, regardless of where the roll axis is, the center of gravity is above ground, so there still must be a weight transfer happening. But if the car is not rolling due to the high roll center height, then there is no spring deflection happening, so the load in the springs must not be changing. Where is all that weight transfer going then? The answer is that it's going through the suspension links, not the spring. The weight transfer has to get from the body down to the tire contact patch somehow, right? And it's clearly not going through the spring, or there would be spring deflection happening, which would result in body roll. So it must be going through the suspension links, because that is the only other path it has. If, on the other hand, the roll centers are on the ground, i.e. the roll moment arm is equal to the height of the center of gravity, then all the weight transfer will pass through the springs and none of it will go through the suspension. Remember, weight transfer is a vertical force, not a horizontal force. The suspension will still be carrying all of the horizontal forces from cornering. It will just not be carrying any of the vertical weight transfer force. So let's now go back to our lowered car. We see that by lowering the car, we increase the distance between the center of gravity and the roll axis. It's true that we reduced the amount of weight transfer happening by lowering the center of gravity, but by increasing the roll moment arm, we increase the percentage of that weight transfer that is passing through the springs rather than through the suspension. And the increase in load going through the springs is greater than the reduction in weight transfer we got from a lower center of gravity. That's why we would see more body roll in a lowered car, even though the center of gravity is lower. It's a paradox, I know, but I hope this helps to explain it a little. Thank you for watching, and I hope you will subscribe and like this video, and we'll see you next time for more Suspensions Explained.